Approaching the keep, Tom started to make out a few small buildings around the base of the cliff, alongside what appeared to be animal pens and fields. The buildings looked like stables or storage houses to him, so the people probably all lived in the keep. As they got closer, a horn sounded. Dakota had gone on ahead, with Fengi coming down, indicating for Tom to stop. Dakota returned with two others, both clad in armour, seemingly more suited to actual battle than what the girls he knew was wearing. It at least covered most of their bodies, even if Tom would still describe it as light, mostly cloth and leather with a few reinforcing plates here and there. It wasn't nearly as ornate either. They had landed and inspected him walking around while the others talked. They didn't seem openly hostile, but they were definitely on edge, all of this most likely being a bit too much to take in. After a few prods with the butt end of a spear and a raised tone for Dakota, they had flown back up to the keep. So this place has guards, seemingly at least a few people, and judging by the farming it's not a temporary residence either. Not a bad place to start, he thought to himself. The four remaining dragonettes had stayed with him as he drove down a small road made between the fields and a small lake. Fengi jumped on the back again and rode along. There were four people tending to the crops and animals that Tom could count. A few children running around too. Of course, everyone stopped to look at the weird thing coming through, and Sapphire let out some embarrassing sounding noises and tried to hide behind her good wing. One of the farmhands, clearly an older male, had a bit of a laugh at her expense, seeming not to be worried by the stranger coming through. Fangi and Sapphire had chatted a bit, and Sapphire had come out of hiding again. As Tom pulled up at the base of the big cliff that apparently constitutes the foundation for the keep, he looked up in awe. It was as tall as a damn cathedral. Even if the cliff added a few dozen metres, it was still near 80 metres tall in its own. Low gravity and flight work has clearly made going tall easier, he guessed, imagining the endless flights of stairs going up. It would be a lot of trips if he didn't want to leave everything down here. Being flightless suddenly sucked a lot more than he had thought it would. Baelathon and Unkai had given them some grief upon their return. They were a day late, had a wounded and some weird stranger with them. After some protest, Dakota had simply told them to go get anyone important and be done with it. It was not their place to refuse her, so they had snapped to it. As they approached, everyone had stopped to look at them. Sapphire wasn't normally opposed to being the centre of attention, but being carried home with a broken wing wasn't something she wanted to be known for. And she felt weird. Sluggish, she thought. She had tried to pinch her arm and hadn't felt a thing. Damn, this stuff is strong, she had said. What is? Fangi had questioned, turning around on the seat to face her. This medicine Tom has given me, I can't feel a thing. Sure that it's safe? Well, he is taking it too, just... Don't let me fall asleep, okay? Uh, okay. Fengi answered, clearly not comfortable with the situation. Ranoff had greeted them as soon as they were within earshot. Oh, hi. Welcome back. The heart went well, I see. The old man clearly amused. There will be stories about this in the future, she thought to herself. Not sure what to do about it. For the time being, she would concede to hide in shame. Oh, come now, Seth. It's not that bad, you will be flying again in no time. Fengi tried cheering her up. I know, but this is still embarrassing, and I feel sick. Oh, now you're just being fictitious. You're riding home in a magical cart, sitting on a treasure trove of who knows what. How can that be embarrassing? Sapphire conceded the point and came out of hiding, even if she wasn't pleased with the situation. The rocky motion of the cart didn't help how she was feeling either. They had pulled up at the foot of the keep. Tom was sitting on the car, staring at the keep. Fengi had helped her off as Dakota came back down with Balathon and Unkai. They want to see our guests right away. Also, they are not pleased with making them worry about us. Well, what should we have done? We couldn't spare someone to go tell them now, could we? What if we needed to get everyone airborne? Fengi objected, trying to ready her defense in case what Dakota said was true. I take no responsibility for what happened. Jack would have been quick to add. I know you don't. You never do. Dakota seemed consigned to her fate of having to endure this on herself. Oh, reliable. Jack Lope sounded almost proud of that statement. Ugh. Why do I have to deal with you? Oh, you love me and you know it. Right. Dakota snapped. Let's get everyone up to the greeting hall. You two got this cart. Nobody touches anything on it. It isn't ours. And it might be capable of killing us all. The two guards stiffened, nodded, and looked perturbed at the weird cart. 
Should we put it further away, ma'am? You shall not touch it. Am I clear? Crystal clear, ma'am. Satisfied her orders were, in fact, going to get carried out, Dakota took to the sky. Well, follow on then. You go the heavy one, Jacko, since I love you so much. Oh, come on! No fair! While Thomas stood there staring, Dakota and the two guards had returned. Words were exchanged, and from what he could gather, Dakota seemed to have some authority here. That would make things easier, he thought. Jacko snapped her fingers in front of him, and started making hand gestures too fast to follow, beating her wings. Oh, right. Up. Tom nodded and Jackalope took to the sky and came swooping back around. He ran like hell and soon he was airborne again. At least this means I don't have to take the stairs this time. My thigh still hurts like hell running like that. He took the opportunity to look out over the keep's grounds. There wasn't much to see apart from the field, small lakes and pens. It was quite idyllic though. He had been put down on an open platform, kind of like a helipad if a bit rectangular. That stuck out from the side of the keep. It had a big wooden door with metal bracing that opened upwards, currently open into an internal area about the size of the pad itself. Sweet, a hangar, he thought to himself. It was empty though, and what would they need a hangar for in the first place? There was a welcome party waiting for them, a few more guards, two important looking people in the middle, and a few others standing around, including a few more children. The two in the middle looked like a male and a female and seemed quite odd, both being nearly completely silver in colour. Two of the guards looked a bit more important too. Oh, so this is our guest you spoke of. I'll give it to you. He looks weird. Where did you say you found him? In the claws of a small pack of Valgras, Mum. Dakota answered promptly, back straight, looking ahead. Oh, and dear, Sapphire, you got yourself quite hurt this time. Did you hit a tree or something? No, ma'am, our guest was thrown at me mid-air. Sapphire said she was getting worse. Her head was spinning right now. I think I need to go lay down. I don't feel well. Huh, that's a new one. Quickly now, get inside. I shall be with you shortly. Fengi, help her out, will you? As the two hobbled off, Nunuk turned her attention back to the new guest. So, you aren't from around here, are you? He can't understand you, Mum. Dakota interjected. Is that so? Well, in that case, uh, we might as well bring him inside. A Puma, we have need of your skills. Rechuck, if you wouldn't mind escorting them. Right then. You go and see to Sapphire. I shall prepare for this one. A Puma answered, turning to leave, gesturing for Tom to follow. Our guest took a wound to the gut. He will need attention too, I think. Dakota interjected. Well, I need some time to prepare anyway. I promise not to make a mess. In the meantime, you should take a look at our guest then. A puma sounded playful, as always, even in his old age. You better not, or you are sleeping on the floor tonight. I'll take a look at our guest too. If he was wounded like that though, perhaps we should let him rest for the night too. Uh, his name is Tom, and I think he would appreciate a bit of rest, Dakota said, almost sounding apologetic that she had failed to mention the information. I see. You look like you have been for it too. Go get some rest. I guess we will hold on till tomorrow, the old woman said, turning to lead the way inside. As Sapphire was taken to the infirmary, she sighed a sigh of relief. She was home safe, if not entirely sound, but her wing and leg would get tended to properly. The nook had started by checking everything had been seated properly. All was going to be fine if a little boring. Being grounded was no fun. You couldn't do much except get in the way.